Hello Sunday School students and welcome to Sunday School Online. I'm your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our first lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem, and Jesus is his name. As is my custom, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with announcements while people are coming into class. So please remember that there are additional Sunday School classes on our GBTAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. We have Sister Casey Fisher taking our students on an adventure. We have Sister Tori Deloge who puts something on our older students' mind. And adults, you have not been left out. Please visit our website, gbtac.org, where you can get our telechurch format information and join us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. as the Lord allows, where we have wonderful teachers that are breaking down the Word of God. And ding, 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 here is an announcement for our adult combined class starting on the first Sunday and also the third Sundays beginning in March and moving forward we are back to in-person classes so if you would like to show up see your teacher ask questions have that interaction be being able to connect with other students in person and not just virtually please meet us for your Sunday school class in person every first and third Sunday, moving forward in March, your class, your in-person class will begin at 9.30 a.m. On campus, 4781 Hamilton Avenue. Oh boy, how exciting. So if you like that, please join us for those in-person classes. While there on our gbtac.org website, please remember to get two additional telephone numbers. One is our prayer line. You are not in this alone. We have our prayer counselor standing by to pray with you concerning your prayer request, concerning salvation, and to speak with you concerning salvation if you are interested in finding out more about what we've been talking about in Sunday school. But just remember, you are not in this alone and our prayer counselors are standing by to pray with you. The last number that I encourage you to get is that of our office telephone number. Please get our office telephone number, make an appointment to speak with our pastor, introduce yourself, allow him to introduce himself, let him know that you've been stopping by the temple. Please remember to like, to subscribe, hit the reminder bell so that you get additional content as it becomes available. And this is your cordial invitation to join us for our in-person services that we have every Sunday morning for worship at 11 o'clock a.m. and Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. for the study of the word or Bible class. Don't deprive yourself of the word. And if you're thinking about COVID practices, we are still observing COVID practices. If you choose to wear a mask, you are welcome. If you choose not to wear a mask, we have a, a, additional space or we have wonderful space where you can distance yourself and still be under the umbrella of the word and with your brothers and sisters in Christ in person. So join us. We will look for you there. So it is time for our review. Last week, we joined uh, the combined class, which was taught by First Lady. Oh boy, it was such a treat. So we joined her for our lesson of learning to be like God. And she taught us that living your life can be compared to building a house. The rules don't change according to our likes, our comforts, our wants. They remain the same. When building your house, remember to do it on the firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. As you build your house, add to the sure foundation patience, 
virtue, love, learning more about Jesus and reflecting him. We are to please Jesus, not man. No, we respect leadership and those God places in our lives to instruct us. But our goal is honoring Jesus and living a life pleasing in his eyes. Always remember that if there is a choice of pleasing God or man, Jesus is the right choice every single time. So your homework, even though it was delayed by a week, it was to read this week's lesson. And we talked about prayer and its ability to reach beyond various things and barriers. And I said that there were multiple examples in the Bible and I asked you to provide one citing the book, the scripture, chapter, and verse. Okay, so the one that I chose was a New Testament example. And that is of Peter when he was in jail and the believers were praying for him. That is found in context in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 3 through 19. Specifically, verse 5 is the one that actually states that they were praying for him. So prayer went across distance, prayer went across knowledge. Peter did not know specifically, so-and-so is praying for me, so-and-so is praying for me. He probably could state with assurance because he knew that they were believers and that they would. But as far as him witnessing them praying for him, he did not know that. And yet he was the recipient, the benefit of the prayers that they prayed. It went across barriers, uh, physical barriers, literally and distance. So take a look at that for yourself if it wasn't your answer. And I applaud you for doing your homework. So this week, our lesson is learning to be like Jesus. Our lesson text is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And our golden text, our focus verse, the reason why we're looking at this lesson is found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. So our aim for this lesson or the purpose is seeing that we can live holy lives with the help of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 17, the first part of verse 28, it states for in him, capital H, capital I, capital M, we live and move and have our being. God is the reason that we are able to live holy lives. It is not through anything that we do, but it is through his spirit enabling us. And we will see that later on in our lesson. So learning, again, is right there in the title of our lesson. So let's, let's look at what it means. In the Merriam-Webster, this second entry for the lesson, or excuse me, for the definition, learning means knowledge or skill acquired by instruction or study. In the Oxford defined, or in the Oxford Dictionary, the acquisition of knowledge or skills through experience study or by being taught, which is exactly what we are doing now, learning to be like Christ, studying his word, applying his word, experiencing his word, and taking in his word. So we are learning to live God's way. So let's take a look at what's going on. Last week, First Lady taught us about building our house on the firm foundation, which is correct. Ding, 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 ding. Jesus Christ, absolutely. He is our sure foundation. So this week, the Apostle Paul writes to the church again. Remember, we've looked at a lot of the letters that he wrote, a lot of the instructions that he wrote up until this point. So he's providing guidance and instruction in different matters. So this week, 
his instruction and his encouragement is on living a godly life through Christ, which is very similar to what he provided before concerning his instructions. Paul points us to Jesus, which is where the word should always point us. It is always to, through, about Jesus. In our lesson, Paul is making a distinction or a difference between our spiritual man and our fleshly man. Our spiritual man, through Christ, yields fruit that is pleasing to God and allows us to live a holy life. It is known as the fruit of the Spirit. Without being made new in Christ Jesus, our natural man produces works of our sinful nature or what is also called works of the flesh. In that distinction, the Apostle Paul outlines the works of the flesh, which is based on self-action, self-reliance, and it yields the following. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry. Sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. And I read that to you from the New Living Translation. And the fruit of the Spirit, which is based on Christ through us, it produces love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Again, that was the New Living Translation paraphrase. Now, in, Gal in Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 of our lesson, Paul states, and I'm reading this to you in the King James Version, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting, excuse me, everlasting. I'm a little tongue tied. <laughs> so this same verse in the message Bible translation reads, the person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds all he have to show or excuse me all he'll have to show for his life is weeds but the one who plants in response to god letting god's spirit do the growth work in him harvests a crop of real life eternal life so paul is encouraging and warning us that whatever part of us that we cultivate that we attend to, that we feed, that is the part of us that will determine the reward or consequences of our actions that we receive. In page 48 of our lesson, and I quote it verbatim here because I love the way that it was stated. It reads, or it states this way, just as a farmer harvests what he plants, we will harvest either good things or bad things, depending on how we live our lives. The Apostle Paul also discussed what to do if Christians make a mistake and sin against God. If anyone makes a mistake, is he is to go to a spiritual brother or sister and be restored. Now, in our church, that means going to a minister and receiving prayer and asking God to forgive and put that person back into right relationship with him or restoration. Now, something that I want to clear up, so I'm going down a little bit of a bunny hole right here, but I want to make sure that we get an understanding. Because of what God requires, which is holiness, sometimes it's easy to think that the Lord is over us with this huge, big stick pointing out each and every mistake and wrongdoing. I want to tell you that is not the God of the Bible. God doesn't want to see people perish, especially 
especially after the great sacrifice he paid in coming to the earth as Jesus to pay for our sins by his death on the cross. He wants us to have good things like a good father. The best he has for us is received in and through our obedience to him. And this takes us to our golden text, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. In the King James Version, it reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, in the Amplified Classic Version, it reads, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, and this is verse 23, meekness, humility, self-control, which is self-restraint or continence, against such things there is no law that can bring a charge. Now, we have already touched on the golden text, so I'm going to close our lesson or our discussion by pointing out a few differences just as the Apostle Paul did. The works of the flesh are based rooted in come from the natural man from feelings from passions from self now you may have already heard or excuse me you may have also heard in church bible class or other sunday school lessons is called the soul or the soulish man all of these works are contrary to god's nature and his commandments and i refer you back to the ten commandments when you look at the listing of this of the works of the flesh Think about the Ten Commandments as well. Fruit, which is also referred to as produce, comes from seed and is defined as the sweet and fleshy product of a tree or other plant that contains seed and can be eaten as food. The fruit of the Spirit is the produce of God's Spirit within us and comes from our submission to God and through His Spirit through us. Now, although a person cannot eat the fruit that is produced from the Spirit of God within us, they can and are nourished by it, meaning they benefit by it. They're uplifted and encouraged by it. Our gentleness, our kindness, our faithfulness, the joy, the love, the peace that we bring with us, it blesses other people and they and that allows them to see God in us and to feel God in us. Now, is there anything else on the slide that you think other people can benefit from and see God through us? Absolutely, self-control. Where other people would just fly off the handle and be very disrespectful, we are able to control ourselves through God's spirit. Ooh. That's a big one, long suffering. Do you know that long suffering, I heard a minister say, suffer long. That's what it means, the simple definition to suffer long. But it makes a difference how we go through our tests and trials. We talked about that a couple of lessons back. If we're groaning and complaining and not acknowledging God's hand in our lives and everything that happens and not being delighted in the good things that he does for us and the only thing that we see is the bad. It's raining today. Where is the sun? And not glad that I have shelter, I have an umbrella, I have clothes that keep me warm and dry in the rain, I have shoes on my feet where my feet are not touching the elements in the rain, and being thankful in the midst of that test trial as suffering, people are able to see the difference of Jesus in us rather than Jesus not being in another person who would behave that way. Very good answers, class. 
In our conclusion, let's see what we learned today. Our spiritual man through Christ yields fruit that is pleasing to God and allows us to live a holy life. It is known as the fruit of the spirit. Without being made new in Christ Jesus, our natural man produces works of our sinful nature or works of the flesh. Paul encourages and warns us that whatever part of us that we cultivate, that we attend to, that we feed, that is the part of us that will dictate, that will determine the reward or consequences of our actions. Although a person cannot eat the fruit that is produced from the Spirit of God within us, they can and are nourished by it. Our gentleness, our kindness, our faithfulness, the joy, the love, the peace we bring with us. So for your homework, read ahead for next week's lesson and I want you to define the term paraclete. The reason being is because that has an application for the lesson that we went over today. And you will learn that when you look up the definition. And her hopefully your definition will also be accompanied by scripture. Now I'm not mandating you to put the scripture with it. But I am hoping that you will see the scriptures that go along with it. Again, if you are not a part of my homework heroes, join my homework hero squad. Psalms chapter 119 verse 11 in the contemporary English version, it states, I treasure your word above all else. It keeps me from sinning against you. It is so important for you to know, to learn, to understand, and to have the word for yourself. Join my Homework Hero Squad. Next week, we're going to be talking about Jesus is baptized. Now, our lesson text will be found in Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 13. And our golden text or our focus verse will be Mark chapter 1, verse 11. And also next week, we start a new quarter. Dun, 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 dun. We will be beginning our spring quarter. Yay! So we will be looking at different lessons and looking at different themes for what the word has for us. So join me next week for Jesus is Baptized. This is our final week in February to celebrate Black History Month. Now, when I say celebrating Black History Month, I mean the National Black History Month holiday. We are able to celebrate, appreciate, honor ourselves every day of the year. But this is, this is the time that's set aside nationally to honor the contributions of the African American community to this nation. So please take advantage of this designation. Learn more about our ancestors, more about the African American community that donated, that contributed, that was a part of the building of this land in so many ways, scientifically, environmentally, through the arts and in culture, educationally, through music, so look at the contributions of the African-American community. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for having joined me for Sunday School Online. Please invite your family, invite your friends, invite your coworkers, invite your peers as we look into the word again on the next time. And I leave you with my borrowed saying from VeggieTales, God made you special and he loved you very much. Have a nice day. Make it a great day. Bye.